Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It's week 73 long weeks here at camp. But with every long journey comes with the payout of your dreams. Yes, I'm being coy, but no, I will be coy no longer. Feels like we got a badge of some sort, you know, as you do in the scouts. So true. Like not our show finally getting the badge it finally deserved. Should we just go out and say it? Yeah. We got signed, baby. We got signed to a podcast network. We are now with Podcast (laughs) One, bitches. Can you believe it? We've been an independent artist for 73 weeks here. And through the grace of God, lots of contracts. Back and forth for a long time, we finally got a deal signed with our new parent company, Podcast One. We've been adopted, y'all. So all of our campers here were part of the Podcast One family. Super exciting. As you guys know, we've been doing this independently for a very long time. We've always joked about getting ad placements. So you might have heard a little drop in one there. It's not guaranteed that we're always going to have them. But now there's an ability for someone to put them in our show. Yeah. Which is just super exciting. Obviously, we've been loving doing this since the very beginning. But it's always been a dream of us to make it monetizable for the most part. You yeah. Know what I mean? 73 weeks. We finally did it. To back it up a little bit. Like we've talked about this like months ago when we were in Hilton Head in October, we got this initial like offer to be a part of this network. And because things take so long with contracts and going back and forth and negotiations from our side and their side, it finally got settled. We finally imported all of our episodes into their network so they can see how good we're doing and all of our cute little campers and all the fun we have. So we do have mom and dad watching us. They've let us have the house to ourselves, but there's a little bit of a big brother here, but I don't mind it. When the cat's away, the mice will play. It's exciting too, because like their network is really funny. If you like look it up, they have a lot of different kinds of shows, but we were looking through like who our sister networks, our sister shows are. Yeah, our podcast sisters. The camp is really its own universe. It certainly is. Well, and you know how we got in the podcast one universe? Do so. Do you guys remember when I did the I've Had It podcast? Those two fabulous ladies who invited me to Oklahoma to be on their show. They're part of podcast one. One. So their producer mentioned our show to the network and then they kind of like seeked us out and were like, hey, I think you'd be a great fit to our show. So really exciting things coming along the, the pipeline. Really nothing is going to change for the listeners. You might get some ads here. Um, we're only going to put stuff up that we like really enjoy and we want to work with. But um, we're just a part of we're excited to be a part of a new um, a family new family. Yeah. And a new level of podcasting that we've been clawing our way to getting so congratulations jonathan congratulations to you too and congratulations to the campers we finally made it I know. <laughs> maybe we can fix those ac units in uh cabin 17 well we have a scorcher in there we have to wait for a couple checks to clear because before we even do that we have we haven't had an oven working in the mess hall for <laughs> like six months we've been doing everything over an open flame y'all sick of the smoked cakes <laughs> That's all we can offer at this point. <laughs> Just charred cornbread again and again. Um, but I also do want to say, as we expand, there might be some um, new things on the website to keep out for. You know, they might be a little hidden. You might have to click a button that says more. I don't know. There might be a game on there called Messy Mess Hall. I don't know. Did you finally put the game on there? I think I did. Oh, my God. Are you excited for people to play? The- Jonathan is being so coy right now because that's all he does. He lives in a koi pond. He. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. The other day, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing watching Gilmore Girls please pay attention I feel offended and he's like over there lit- I'm not joking you guys he's coding this motherfucker knows how to code a website he developed an entire little video game for you guys and it's, it's just for fun you want to tell him about the game I did test it today and um it did have a bug no pun intended if you know you know but um <laughs> no, no it really intended. did it like it crashed on me and I was like well I need to figure out how to code this later so maybe I will maybe I won't I don't know it's just for fun and also it's not like it is kind of difficult, but the program that I used is like for people, mostly children, learning how to code. So I well, feel like I was on that playing field. It's funny because you were like, oh, I'm coding a, a video game for the website. And like, 
as I'm sure most of you campers would think to yourselves if that was a conversation you were having with Jonathan, you'd be like, okay, like what can this game even look like? I was thinking like very like retro, like Tetris thing. And then you turn the computer and you show me the game you're making and I won't give it away what the game is. But I was like, not the graphics giving, like not this like actually like, I'm, I didn't even know you could even do that. You're so impressive. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know how I did it either, but maybe I'll code something else. I don't know. I just, I was feeling creative. I was feeling ambitious. I felt the Adderall pulsing through my veins and I said, I'm going to get to work no, that nobody asked for. You're addicted to blue light. Like if you're not in front of a screen, you're not happy. Yeah, it's true. Did you also add the other feature you've been working on yet? Or is that I did, but I'll let, I'll let them explore it. Oh my God. The other feature, is it, is it under the same area? Or what feature are you talking about? Because now we're being secretive. Not the game, but the, the posting of what has been... Oh, yes. Is yeah, that that's been up. That's been up. Oh my gosh, so maybe I'm... somebody stumbled upon it because people have been writing in and it's right next to the write-in tab. I know. So if you're like looking through the website, there was another feature. Can I just say what it is? Yeah. Jonathan created a lost and found page and put fake items up on the website that we found throughout camp. Because you guys know, we do our morning walks. We have a cup of coffee. We bang on cabin doors. We do room checks periodically. We, Me and Jonathan, we go by the lake. We make sure that the blob is still working. We check the, we check the algae levels. You guys know the algae has been really bad lately, so no one's been allowed to swim in the lake we shock the lake sometimes we just shock it you you put a couple of chemicals in it oh that's i've been just throwing a toaster in there a live toaster and i thought that was kind of just shocking it. but that makes sense <laughs> that why all the fish stupid. are on the shore well we're just we're working through things so look at the lost and found and look at the game because the lost and found is hysterical the game is so great and jonathan like i'm gonna give you your flowers right now i'm giving you a full bouquet of daisies because this has been completely your idea your initiative and you put it all up there together and it's just it's just like another fun element that's not really necessary but like why not like yeah, why, why not, not add to the the fiction and, and, the, and lore, the lore of it all the lore of it all yeah. here at camp so, Bird. check it out uh camp counselors podcast.com just for fun and if you're there you could write in for a show for a show like story for um trail mix and yeah. you have something that's been lingering on your mind when you're when you have time i know a lot of people are commuting not someone playing the video game in traffic right no, no, now please don't do that also i don't know if it's mobile friendly i tried it on my phone once and it worked i tried it on my phone again and it didn't work we're working out the kinks okay sandwich can only do so much but you do play a sandwich in the game that's all i'm gonna say ah, anyway stop i'm so excited shall we move on i feel like we've just been chatting too much we've been chatting for too long what the hell is a podcast about other than chatting of course we're gonna chat the girls are here to chat <laughs> everybody grab a really tall glass of lemon infused iced tea or two percent milk then you're going to get yourself a little hot pocket because those are always available in the chilled vending machine by cabin 32 and come sit down on the picnic bench and let's get into today's episode okay let's get into it what are we talking about a major holiday is approaching us and i am so excited to go through it with the girls do you want to see what holiday it is Galentine's Day. Galentine's Day, y'all. Fuck V Day this year. We're not talking about Valentine's Day. We've already done that. We haven't talked about Galentine's Day. And if you're unaware of what Galentine's Day is, Wikipedia describes it as the holiday <laughs> that celebrates women's friendships. First of all, I'm obsessed with this already. Galentine's Day is typically marked as February 13th, but can be observed any day between February 1st and Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day events are typically all female occasions of mutual empowerment and a reminder for women to support and uplift one another. Yeah, we don't want to see anybody celebrating Valentine's Day on February 15th. That's not Valentine's Day. You're just drinking too much on a Tuesday. You can't celebrate Christmas on July 8th. Like, that's not well, Christmas in July. That was, I literally told myself in my head to say anything but July. And in July, came July. Out. I'm so mad at myself. But you guys get the gist. It's like anytime between this episode drops and the 13th, it's time to call up the ladies, get on the horn, get a crew together and really just start start some sort of union of friendship yeah i want to see everybody gnawing on those rock hard nasty pieces of chalk that they call candy which i don't actually mind by what the way. candies are you talking about the candy hearts of course i hate those you love those the message hearts yeah i do think the idea like conceptually as a candy i think it's really cunty and fun it's like oh my god you're so sweet you're so naughty like the purple one always said naughty in the red letters but also it's like you think they're gonna be fun and then you get one you're like first of all this one's printed on the side and it's cut off like yeah. they could really work 
harder in the manufacturing. I want to see that episode of Unwrapped. I'm sure it's out there. That's a really interesting one. And also it's like, I get it. Like you've been saying be mine since the 50s. Let's rebrand. Let's have an entire adult pack. Let's have a kid pack. Let's like, okay, like look at the business model that Cards Against Humanity has and start reaching out to like shows and have like licensed candy hearts for like that holiday. It's like, do I need to get into the Neko headquarters and start working with the marketing team? <laughs> that is Neko behavior. It's Neko behavior and it's big Neko who's refusing to push the needle on what we can do in the candy hearts industry. It's like, we're here blazing a trail once again. Jonathan, are, Jonathan and I are constantly out with our wood clippers. Yeah. Our we, leaf clippers. Just doing the work. We're Neko babies. Oh my God. We're not. Ne <laughs> <laughs> Neko babies. Okay. So it. I was actually really interested about where Galentine's Day came from. And I was correct. So it came from the show um, Parks and Recreation. Yeah. So there's this like really iconic scene between Amy Poehler and um, who plays Leslie Nope, and I'm pretty sure she's with Rashida Jones, mm. who I cannot, for the life of me, remember her character name in the show. I don't know, but it's it's Amy polarizing. Yeah, it, it, it's exa exactly what it is. So they have a, a, they're like, okay, we're gonna have this like women only like friendship based holiday before Valentine's Day called Galentine's Day, but the original writer was a man. And we're going to be honest. And we have to be honest. Michael Schur, S-C-H-U-R. But I want to give him his credit because I was like, you wrote the episode. And I just thought, how incredible is it to be a writer on a TV show to come up with a fictional holiday and then for other people to really put it into motion? Because now mainstream outlets have like outlets have put it on with merchandise, including Walmart, Party City, Amazon, and Etsy. Like, Of course, if we can capitalize on it, why not? But it's like, you know what? Like how many times do people just write like random bits in TV show? But he really just like came up with a holiday and people people are doing it like we're doing it here at Cam Shady Birch. yeah I think it's exciting I think it's exciting as well let's call up the gals call up the gays call up the vays what do you think would be some good ideas for our campers who are like looking out there like okay I'm gonna do that with my friends I'm gonna set the scene with my crew like where what should they do like what are some good activities for Valentine's Day obviously we're probably sipping wine whether that's alcoholic or non-alcoholic I feel like is always a, a fun choice um I think you can never go wrong with karaoke. That's fun. Isn't that fun? I will say, however, we will be having Valentine's Day here at the camp, but we could only secure the rights to Cascada and the Baja Men. So that's kind of the only discography we've got in the catalog. So we're going to work on some some copyright stuff. Yeah. UMG, we've got some issues with UMG right now. So does TikTok. It's a whole thing. We can't talk about it legally. A couple. There's some gray area there, but I think another great place you could take your friends would be to go to brunch. It's like brunch was really exciting for a couple Couple years and then everyone kind of forgot about her because it was like just overkill it was like we can't just keep doing brunch but like she's still available and you can always call her up and she's consistent like there's nothing better than a marriage of a mimosa with a waffle it's just it stood the test of time it's going to continue being as delicious as you remember it so maybe call the girls up be like hey everybody we're going to meet at the alcoholic ihop down the road we're all going to have a gab and a guzzle and we're just going to really enjoy each other's company. You could put a flask in your purse if you want. If you if you don't want to go out and you want to save some money, like, okay, everybody bring an entree to the house. That's true because I do fear, I mean, we are giving you, as this episode comes out, you've got a week, right? So ready, set, go if you're listening to this the day of. Yeah, but like, honestly, like th this article says you can't celebrate it after the 13th, but I'm going to step back on my word because I'm constantly growing and moving as I speak. And I'm realizing now like, okay, I don't care if your Valentine's Day is until the end of February or March. It's just a good excuse for you to get the girls together. I love that we can constantly um, back up the the facts that we do contradict ourselves, which is calling it growing. And that's honestly all we can do. Yeah. And that's why we've just installed the camp garden. Looking for <laughs> camp farmers. Um, so, oops. I know. Can I move on to my next bit? Please? Yeah, what's your next bit? My next bit is that we are putting on a Valentine's Day event here at camp. It's going to be Sunday morning. If you are available, you may come down to Cabin 2. And a lot of people don't realize this because Cabin 2 is very unassuming. It's kind of towards the entrance of camp, kind of near the camp infirmary. It's a small building, but it really does open up once you get inside. It's kind of like an optical illusion. Mm -hmm. And that is your camp activities headquarters. Mm -hmm. So it basically is a VFW with a bar and everything. So if you want to come in, we do have some great activity set up for the day do, should i go through the list yeah please do okay so starting off this will be um there'll be a mimosa bar a pastry bar and a panini bar 
So um, that that's kind of covering your in, initial food groups. Like yeah. what else are you missing here? But if you feel like you are missing something there that you want to contribute, like feel free to bring whatever you want, but also just know that like your counselors here as um, honorary women are here to support you. And we don't want you to have to come to this event and like do any of the work. Like we want to like make sure that you feel like you can just enjoy yourselves. But at the same time, who are we to step in your way if you have a better idea? Like this is a collaborative camp. Yeah. There may be a hierarchy of counselor to camper, but like right now, not on Valentine's Day. Yeah, it could, absolutely. There's no hierarchy on Valentine's Day. With that being said, we will be participating in these because legally, like we're the counselors. So there have to be overseers. So you guys we, sign that paperwork. Like we have to be in present. Yeah, we have <laughs> to be there and we have to have fun. That's also part of it. There was a little asterisk at the bottom of that. But the fun thing about that, the Panini Bar, um, it is it's still a cabin and it's set up like a normal cabin and everything is going to be put out on a buffet uh, on the bunk beds. So you got to climb up to the top grab yourself a little ladle oh. slosh it on and then you gotta climb back down with with the styrofoam plates yeah and imagine like there's like a, a vegetable crudite up there and you're standing on the ladder trying to scoop hummus onto your plate while the girls back at the table are having so much fun you're like wait what was that joke just be careful please okay like get off of the top layer of the bunks while you're drinking yeah. there's gonna be um pineapple juice i love a mimosa with pineapple juice and it's so funny because when you order it out on a menu obviously it's typically orange juice but when they say pineapple they always go to tropical it's like okay why don't we just like it's like it's not that tropical it's like okay well but, they don't grow pineapples in illinois well actually they? you can buy those seeds i bought them at epcot once you don't buy seeds i bought a tiny pineapple tree in epcot no i didn't no i bought the nut and I brought, it was in the laying of the land area pavilion of Epcot. Hey, where else would it be? And I begged my mom. I was like, mom, I don't remember if it was a seed or a little kid. And I was like, please, if you buy this for me, I will never ask for a gift until tomorrow. <laughs> and she did buy it for me and it did not take. No, it didn't. It didn't accept into the soil. I love to put a, a like a nice new plant in front of a cold, drafty window, and then flip out why it died. That'll do it. Meanwhile, it's like literally getting icicles on its stems. Yeah, that plant downstairs is not doing well. I know, uh, but until every last leaf turns brown, I will not throw her out because I always believe in a comeback. And it's strange because all the leaves, like it's slumped over. All the leaves are brown, and, and the skies are gray. But it's she's not giving up. She's not letting go of that stem we do need to figure out what's well, wrong with I, her every morning i put my iphone next to the pot and i put on fight song oh god she needs it now more than <laughs> ever doesn't she this is my fight song take back my life song honestly play that for your dead plants and see what happens for me nothing but it might work for you mm. moving forward we're gonna do a galentine's day white elephant why are we only doing white elephant on christmas it's such a silly concept so we should remarket white elephant to be another why are we just all constantly helping the needle be pushed for the world like why is white elephant only at christmas why can't it be a galentine state thing great question one that's been you know begging for an answer for centuries what is an animal that's like pink pink flamingo duh oh my god that's so fun so galentine's day has pink flamingo same concept we're not gonna explain it to you over again but um we're gonna play pink flamingo then also i have a really fun game for the girls is it castor oil twister no, but that's something that you would like. Would you just put it in your belly button the entire time? No, you just put castor oil all over the twister board and then everybody slips and slides. I haven't seen enough scientific evidence to back up your castor oil claims. And I'm not joining in on that cult. Okay, fine. So my game idea is so fun. I like come up, I came up with this this morning and I was like, this is hysterical. We're going to do an unconventional outfit challenge. I love RuPaul. Um, <laughs> so basically what I have provided for the girls here at camp is I purchased a palette illegally of 1000 heart-shaped chocolate boxes all varieties of sizes and colors and as a team we're all going to unwrap them and dump all the chocolates on a table and then you're all going to partner up in groups of two to four we're not looking for five but if god i'm not going to like cut your head off if you go into a group of five and you're all going to have during 30 minutes to design an entire dress on one of your girls in your group uh, making the heart-shaped boxes. You can cut them up, you can glue them, you can tape them, you can do whatever you want, get really creative with it, and then obviously we're going to do a fashion show. Oh my God, love, just please, no staplers. God. Can we be on the same team? Um, We'll see. We'll see how it pans that out. That was a test because Sandwich already asked me to be on his team. And you know what? You, uh, one of the girls, you, they would be, they, you would be so lucky if any of our campers invite you into their group. Fine. You'd be so lucky because me and Sandwich, we already have a design challenge idea. 
Well, you can't do it. That's cheating. Well, I'm telling the girls ahead of time. They know ahead of time, too. All right. That's fair, I guess. And then after that, we're going to break for food again because, like, what's a Valentine's Day without tons of food? This time, we're doing a pizza bar, fresh crispy fries, and Caesar salad. We have a kale Caesar salad and an iceberg, depending on your vibe. And then we, I thought it would be fun to do sauce fallons, so I rented those for the girls. Oh, my God. Perfect. They got clogged last year. Yeah. Well, we got them cleaned. Mm. Yeah. So, we actually, no, that's not very yes and in me. They were clogged last year, so we had to buy new ones. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. And we did have to dip into the funds. Yeah, well, your funds, because you pay for this camp. So there will not be lights in this cabin. We will be doing this by candlelight. Candelabra, if you will. What sauces are you looking to put in these fountains? Because in my mind, there's at least six. Sriracha. Ooh, you're mm. such a spicy boy. I'll circle back to that. That's foreshadowing. Okay. Yeah, that's oh, foreshadowing. that's going to come back. Okay. Um, Obviously, Ken's honey mustard. It obviously. has to be Ken's. Mm -hmm. Um, Mayo. Oh, just say aioli, babe. No, I want mayonnaise. Okay. Well, I'm going to put an aioli card because I don't think any of the girls are going to be brave enough. Well, maybe we have some mayo lovers out there because as a sour cream girly, like, I'm never ashamed. But mayo girls, uh, honestly, I do bring shame on their life. Mm. And I shouldn't because I and am you a... Should. You really can't. But you know what? Mayonnaise isn't dairy. It can sit out. It's, it's egg and oil. It's egg and oil. So it's like, I don't... I don't co-sign that because I'm a dairy girl. Mm. Moving forward, I love Sweet Baby Ray's Chipotle barbecue, and I think you guys are going to like that too. We need something a little zing. We have this sriracha, but this is going to be a little bit of a... Yeah, uh, a tangy, a, a sweet tangy, something that's tolerable. You don't need to wash down with water. It is incredibly sweet. It is incredibly tangy. It's incredibly got a kick to it. So that's going to be really fun. Unfortunately, though, campers, we were not able to secure ketchup from the distributor this year. Our guy at Cisco Food Distributor, he did not have his plug for ketchup. So the only thing we have available for this is packets. And there's not that many. It's just whatever we have in our glove box in the car. Yeah. So if you do have ketchup packets <laughs> lying around or an extra bottle. Please, it, please bring. BYOB, not booze, ketchup. Be, bring your own ketchup bottle. Um, yeah, that's all I have for food. Did you have any other um, activities you wanted to add to our, our Camp Galentine's Day? I thought that it would be fun if we did a little bit of a challenge on Galentine's Day. So... I introduced to you the gallon challenge where the first person to chug an entire gallon of 2% milk will allegedly win a uh, $50 Lane Bryant gift card. You got to do it in under six minutes. Allegedly. So that means we don't have the Lane Bryant gift card? We're working on it. Oh, Okay, I'm gonna ask because I I do have I'm I'm seeing some lactose campers in the back waving. No, I see you. No, I know I have your allergy report here. Okay, I'm not an idiot. Um, does every camper have to participate? No, not at all. We actually will only have one gallon, so we're all gonna pick one. Who's the milkiest camper of them all? Come <laughs> that's a special badge. Now the that milkiest camper. <laughs> At Camp Shady Birch. If you win that, you win the bragging rights to be the Dairy Queen of Camp Shady Birch. Come Who on, is Dairy it? Queen. It's Clarabelle. I'm obsessed with that. I think a great way to wrap up our Valentine's Day would be to put on a classic flick with each other. Everybody pile in, get your comfies on, grab a blanket, and put on a movie. I don't think it'd be fair for Jonathan and I to like to like pick the movie. So we're open to suggestions. I always think a classic could be Bridesmaids. It always makes me laugh. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, but we could do a romantic comedy. We could even do an action film. It's all up to what you guys want to watch. So Flubber. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Seeing if it sticks. <laughs> that was so stupid, of course. <laughs> that was really dumb. I liked it, though. Okay, so that's what's going on. I just really believe, to close this all out about Valentine's Day, I'm now calling out Big Apple. Yep, I'm looking at you, iPhone. I want to see Valentine's Day marked as the February 13th on our iPhone calendars, okay? I just, I need to see it. I think it's got enough momentum now, enough people globally recognize it. So why aren't we globally recognizing it in our calendar? So Apple, I'm looking at you. Neko, I've been looking at you. So that's all I have to say about Valentine's Day. Okay, so that's enough Valentine's Day. We've set you up with some ideas. Maybe you can do some at home if you can't make it to camp when we're having ours. Um, I think, you know, we set you up for success. That's for sure. Now, I have a great volley for you. Oh, oh do you? I would love to hear an update, and as, as do many of our campers who've been writing in ferociously with their ink and quills. Sending, sending uh, their owl. owl. Their owls. We, we're the camp is inundated with owls from campers from all around the world asking, "Cows Jonathan, Cows Jonathan, how is volleyball going? Did Actually, you go yet?" People were commenting. I did. I did. The fictional part of this is over. This is actually the truth. Shocking or not? Um, I did. Hey guys, I went to volleyball. I had my first volleyball game. I'm so proud of you. We went. Tell us how it went. We played for an hour. We did not win. 
but I had fun. So I think that's a win in itself. So I'm not to take it to like a very like serious point, but we have had so many campers who've written in specifically for trail mix about like making friends in cities, especially as we all like get past that like college age and we're entering our 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever 50s keeps going up. It does become increasingly harder to make friends in places um, like as we get older. So would you do you think this is like a good like resource to join something like this to make friends? Yeah, for sure. Because we play the game was kind of late. It was at eight. Which is game tonight at 10. Hey, his game PM. starts at 10 p.m. tonight. Can you guys? Someone out there just gasped. Yeah. Someone said, Are you gonna go play volleyball at 10 p? That is shocking. But yeah. last week was eight. Right? So last week was eight. Uh -huh. It was on a Thursday. Yeah, it was on a Thursday. Do you want to give them the address too and then like your descriptions so they can find you? Absolutely not. <laughs> And then we actually, we played the game and then we went, like the entire team except for um, one girl, we all went out for drinks after. So I got to know everybody. That's and awesome. And that's, I made friends that way. So I think it's a great way to make friends. So you're exercising, you're drinking, you're having fun, you're making memories, you're looking sporty, you're looking cute. And I'm just really proud of you because you Thank made you. weeks and weeks of jokes about not going and trying to go. And then I know like, it's obviously incredibly hard to push yourself out of your comfort zone to try new things, but like. You did it and you came back and you're happy and you're going back again. So yeah, I'm yeah. really proud of you. Thank you. And um, I was like, fuck, like nobody's going to believe me because after we left um, the gym that we were doing this in, I was like, Shit, we don't have a picture there. I don't have proof that I was there. So I asked the Lenny if she could take a picture of me at the bar that we went to. And I didn't even have a volleyball. I, I used a little emoji and I, I put the emoji where a volleyball should be. But I swear to God. I actually went. Well, tonight when you go, can you get that picture so we can put it in next week's episode? I'll do my best to remember. Well, because now you have me questioning because it almost feels like, you know, when people <laughs> lie about things and they bring up unnecessary details, it's like, oh, I wasn't even thinking that, but now that you mentioned it. So like, not me and the other campers behind the camera who are waving saying, we don't believe you. <laughs> Someone behind the camera just lit a, a torch. So now we're blurring no, the lines. She's coming over here. She's going to come kill you with a torch. Well, now we're blurring the lines too much between the camp and the camp lore of it all and the real life of it all. And you know, maybe that's the way life should be. It's a survival mechanism. It is. Guys, continue to blur your lines. Join volleyball. Hate on, on Big Neko. And support women. That's what we do here at camp. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to morning announcements. I lost our place. This is the part of the show where we share news articles with you that you might have missed that we think you should know about. Jonathan, I would love nothing more than you to go first. Okay, so this is a long one. A doozy, if it, you will. It's a doozy. I'm basically going to give you like a mini documentary in your ears right now because we have to start way back to get to where we have finished. Oh. But I saw the title and I couldn't help myself. So this article is coming from fortune.com and it was written by Andrani Sen. Uh, shout out to her because there's a lot of work that went into this. So giving credit where credit is due on this deep dive. And it is titled, What Really Caused the Sriracha Shortage? Two Friends and the Epic Breakup That Left Millions Without Their Favorite Hot Sauce. Unbelievable because we've been looking for it. We've been looking for sriracha every time we go into the grocery store. Like the OG sriracha, you guys know the one with since the rooster. The fall, maybe? I think since last year. It's been a very long time and I will I have not seen it since. Like anywhere. We go to like not grocery stores here, Massachusetts. Like sometimes we'll occasionally see one or two bottles and snag them up. But there's a reason for it and it's drama. Let's hear it. Okay. Uh also Jasper Chapman contributed to reporting this story. Uh, and it does appear in the February-March 2024 issue of Fortune with the headline, Hot Mess. Back in the 1980s, this man, David Tran, was a refugee from Vietnam, and he moved to L.A. to start his new life with his family. And he started to make hot sauces, you know, to make a living, to sell to nearby Chinese and Vietnamese families. So there's this um, famous sauce from Thailand. So he's not from Thailand, he's from Vietnam. But there's this Thailand sauce, and it comes from this town called Si Racha, like S-I space R-A-C-H-A. And this woman started making it in like the 1940s. So he took that sauce like as a base and he kind of just Americanized it to find like the perfect blend. And he 
basically just added like a bunch of sugar to jalapenos and he ground everything together with garlic vinegar and only two preservatives so he started selling it around to the to the neighbors and he was calling it sriracha now sriracha could not be trademarked in the united states because it is all it's the name of a place got it so that's going to be important for a later moment um, then he obviously he put it in the iconic bottle with the bright green tip to set it apart from others and the uh, the rooster on the front. I learned through this article that it's to commemorate the Chinese New Year because he was the year of the cock. Oh, that's and it's it's really amazing that he's like um, moves here as a refugee. Really, like it's the it's truly the classic American dream, like launching a business and launching a fortune. So. Um, kudos to this man. I'm not going to get too much into his story. There is a documentary I'll recommend at the end, but it was a lot. It was a bad start to that. Um, okay, so then in the late 1980s, people outside of the Chinese and Vietnamese communities began loving it in LA. And David Tran started Hoi Fong, which is, which is the the company that Sriracha is run under. And he started like distribute, like making it in-house and distributing it independently businessman yeah exactly it's a very small company so as demand ramped up uh david's biggest challenge was to find peppers that were like perfect because apparently they're very uh particular with the peppers that they're using chiles that are have to be picked perfectly and refrigerated or you know he has to have access to them within like five hours of them being picked it's very specific yeah supply chain issues were coming up because the business was booming right essentially he tried to get it um like outsource other people but he would get like a truckload in and they would be green and he's like well i can't make a green so like it's going to turn green it's not going to be sriracha that's wrong i had to pay for it we have to send it back so this guy in 1988 his name is craig underwood so these are our two best friends now he caught wind of the story and he writes david and he's like hey i have a farm i grow food at the time he was competing with the baby carrots which were new but he wasn't yeah isn't that random can you pull i can't even picture a time in the universe where we didn't have the luxury of little baby carrots little bite-sized carrots i don't want a big old dirty looking carrot i want that cute little nugget my hummus so craig hits him up and's like hey i have 50 acres of farm i will grow your peppers because bitch i'm two hours away from you i'll pluck the peppers and i will deliver them same day perfect it seems to be working out so for the next three decades they became business partners, best friends. Their wives became best friends. They watched each other's children grow up, and they made it through hard times together. Oh, that's a really sweet story, but I can already tell by the way you're telling it, it's not going to continue to be sweet. Well, you can also tell by the title. That much is true. Um, So one of those times, do you remember this? I, I didn't realize it was in 2013. I thought it was, you know, later than that. But in 2013, um, it was in Ir- Irvindale, California, they tried to evict David's sauce factory because the pepper fumes from the sriracha were like affecting the neighborhoods around, allegedly. Did you hear about that? No. And then there was like a small shortage because they had to kind of shut down things. But anyway, Craig stood before the city council. Basically, the factory did not get evicted. And David stood up for his friends that he was in, you know, doing business with. So Hoi Fong remained an independent company and they um, almost got bought out multiple times, but every time David was like, no, absolutely not. You're not buying this out. I'm running things the way that I want. And this is going to be a successful business of Sriracha. But as the company grew, Craig's farm, because this wasn't the only thing, like he was basically like, I give them the peppers and we're the only people who are giving them the the peppers. But as Sriracha grew, he needed to make more space for the peppers, which gave him less space for other jobs he was providing for. So he was separate from Sriracha. But now he's kind of like, well... Even though I'm just supplying the vegetables, I'm kind of, that's all I'm really doing because that's all I really have the capacity to do. Yeah, it's like putting all your eggs in one basket. It's a classic Underwood basket behavior. (laughs) Exactly. David has his Hoi Fong company cover the cost of like the seeds and equipment and labor for Craig's pepper fields just to kind of like cover, make sure he's good because they, he realized what his friend was doing for him and in 2015 at the height of it all there was a hundred million pounds of peppers coming out of one farm which is in the documentary i watched today it showed it's the entire size of lower manhattan is one man's farm and that's pretty incredible to not have multiple like people 
growing your peppers. I this it seems like bad business. You need to diversify where you're getting your product from. And that is a lesson we will soon learn. So it's Craig's farm, right? We have Craig and David. And David, that same year, for some reason that I was trying to read between the lines, he started a separate company, separate from from the Sriracha company. And it is called Chili Co. to buy and sell chili peppers. So Craig was like, oh, that's like, that's weird. We've been working together since the 80s. And um, that's kind of what I do. And he didn't want to, Craig didn't want to work with Chili Co. because he feared that it wouldn't have the assets to guarantee payments. Um, Craig also said that David made several failed attempts to hire this guy named Jim Roberts, who was the COO of the farm. They were He was trying to get the guy from the farm to come work for Chili Co. In the article, it says, quote, things came to a head that terrible afternoon in November 2016. I'm like, okay, I've been reading, but now I'm hooked on phonics, bitch. So when this is occurring, we have three characters at play here. We have David, Craig, and Jim. And Jim works for Craig. Craig's on vacation, okay? So now the one best friend's on vacation in Hawaii with his family. David, who runs Sriracha, is now talking to the guy at the farm, Jim. Recollections differ, but what is agreed upon is this. On November 9th, Jim Roberts drove to Hoi Fong's factory at David Tran's request to look at some equipment. And then they started disagreeing about what price that Sriracha was going to charge for the next season. And um, then David was like, well, it is quite possible that I could get the peppers I'm looking for overseas. And then Jim chimes back and he's just like, well, you're telling me this with Craig not here. Craig's, you know, he's on vacation right now. And the whole thing was because I'm two hours down the road. You want us to pluck them and send them. And like, it's been working like that for three decades. Like, what is the deal now? And then David again gave Jim the opportunity. He's like, hey, if you want to come work for Chili Co, let me know. Now, it did paint David in a bad picture, in a, de- in a bad light. This article was really from the point of view of... Craig, the guy with the pepper farmer. I'm just keeping that in mind. Just just keeping that in mind. This conversation turned into like a full-blown argument. And quote, things were said that could not be taken back. And Jim left the factory hours later. He called Craig in Hawaii and told him what went down. And a 28-year business relationship was effectively over. David got greedy. And that's what it came down to. So then... After 2016, Sriracha was still moving forward. So where was he getting his peppers then? That's kind of why there was a shortage and why there currently is one is because he really tried to do his best to move forward and get the right peppers. Some people were like, oh, the the Sriracha is, it's new. It tastes different. It's a weird color because it was literally coming from the same pepper farm and now it's not. To this date, it's been seven years since this was happening. And then uh, I'm not going to get into too many details, but I do want to mention that despite the pepper supply chain, Hoi Fong has not laid off any of the 115 employees. And apparently David was like taking money out of his own pocket to like make sure the employees were good and everybody stayed with them, especially like during COVID and all that stuff. Meanwhile, Craig launched his own chili business, making his own sauce called Dragon Sriracha. Not just that, but he also partnered with David's now largest competitor, Tabasco. Wait, so should we order Dragon Sriracha? Just try it out because obviously, like, I don't want to separate from David, but like, Craig needs support now too. Well, I don't know if he's gonna need that because he he partnered with Tabasco, who did start their own Sriracha under the Sriracha title in 2014 when you know David and Craig were still a team together. But here's where it gets so petty. With Craig now on board, September 2022, Tabasco launched their website, SrirachaShortage.com. So you go to srirachashortage.com and the giant letters at the top say looking for something and you scroll down and it looks nearly identical to Sriracha's iconic bottle with the hot green top, except theirs is olive green. You know what though? I will say like, it seemed like the promise was in the peppers all along. So if the pepper farmer has the good peppers, like the manufacturing can always be repeated, but you can't find the good pepper. So David bit the hand that fed him. And obviously I support the American dream, but at the end of the day, like this guy was probably a billionaire. So it's like, I can't feel too sad for him because you launched Sriracha. I think you're okay, David. So I'm going to support Craig in this and I'm going to buy a bottle of dragon Sriracha because I want to try it. And I'm sick of our stop and chop sweet Sriracha. The one we have now is sweet. Yeah, it is. It's not exactly what we're looking for. Um, And I am just going to wrap this up really quick. So the uh, the author of this article, she did ask David Tran and Craig Underwood the same question. 
would you ever get back together to work? Oh my God. They're like, wait, what did he say? This is, I'm going to start crying. What did they say? So David Tran said this. Absolutely not. <gasps> I need chili, but a guy like that, why? Without his chili, yeah, we make less money, but no. At the end, it just got really messy. We're not going to think about the past. We need to think about the future. Oh my God. It's such a shark. I love it. And then Craig Underwood said, not with David. If somebody else ever took over and purchased Hoi Fong Foods, yeah, we certainly would do business, but not with David. Jeez. So it really so ended on a bad It bad ended note. on a bad note, and clearly they're not going to get into the details of everything that went down. But I think because there was, in my opinion, because there was a third person, Jim, who was with the farms, and David was trying to get him to work there, I think that really did it for him when they had been in business for so long for 28 years what's the documentary called so the documentary documentary is called sriracha and it's on peacock and tubi i watched it this morning it's only 32 minutes it's you know it's nothing Quick. really to write home about but you do see both of them in it it's mostly around david and you do get a lot of david trans um story his background story of how it started and it, it's it's not pleasant you know but his stuff turned around he seems like a really sweet quiet reserved man um see but i don't know because again this article it, it felt like it was coming from mostly craig's point of view no one has ever become a dynamite in business and and like led a charge like a, a sriracha is a sweet sweet meek man i'm sure he's not a bad person but like I'm sure he also knew that the cameras were rolling. Okay. Uh, that is, you know what? That I'm is a good point. I'm suspicious of people and I'm suspicious of millionaires and billionaires. Yeah. So as, as we all should be, because you don't get your way to the top by um, tiptoeing well, yeah. and being sweet. Yeah. Um, but what I will say, and I didn't really think about this, but it is so true that Sriracha has never paid a penny for advertising ever. <gasps> that is so crazy. Isn't it, it? It all came out of L.A. by word of mouth in the 80s. And that's yeah. how it just kind of ended up everywhere. I've never seen like a sriracha commercial. Yeah. So spicy. Yeah. So that is that is my story. Thank you for listening. Loved it. Thank you for sharing that. And you're such a sriracha head that it's really exciting for you to like come to a conclusion of what's been happening. Because we've been talking about it in this camp for so long. We, we have not been able to get you guys your sriracha ketchup that you've been begging for for our classic fries. So, um, but somehow you landed it for the fountain for Valentine's day. Well, yeah, I'm going to buy it by the gallon. Did you, did you just contact? Yeah. David I contact. Tran? Yeah. I had up, I had up Dave. Yeah. We have a connect with Dave guys. Yeah. So. <sighs> so what's your story? Um, my story couldn't be further from yours. Yours is hot where mine is cold. <gasps> Please. Did you plan that? No, it's just all about the duality here at camp. We love to hit you from all ends. Um, my article is from LA times. It's written by Connor sheets. The article title is Snowboarder Spent 15 Hours Trapped Overnight in a Tahoe Ski Gondola. Holy shit. <laughs> can you believe it? I can believe that. A woman spent 15 hours inside of a gondola high above the snow-covered slopes of Lake Tahoe Area Ski Resort, according to local authorities. Monica Lasso was on a snowboarding trip with a friend at South Lake Tahoe's Heavenly Mountain Resort on Thursday when she decided she was too tired to ride her board back down the mountain, according to KCRA News, which first reported the incident. So she asked an employee if she could take a gondola back down, boarding at 4.58. She's on the way down the mountain. 5 p.m. stops, starts, like 5 p.m. comes. Yeah. Stop. Oh, no. She's in the middle of the mountain. And it's indoor, though. It's like a little, it's a gondola. It yeah. is a covered gondola. It is, it's not heated, but it is enclosed. <gasps> oh, no. So it's not heated. No, it's not heated. Okay. And even if it was, they turn the gondola. They don't keep them hot all day. That Actually, is so true. So keep in mind, there's, she has no light. And she doesn't have her phone. <gasps> Wait, where's her phone? Her phone's back at the lodge, which that part's weird to me because like I've gone snowboarding, as you guys know, that one horrific experience I've talked about on the show. But I had my phone. Yeah. So it's like, Monica, where's your phone? But it doesn't matter because in this story, yes, and Monica doesn't have her phone. So she's up there all night, 15 hours. So from 5 p.m. till 8.30 the next day, Monica is like, in this freezing cold gondola. It dropped to the 20s in that night. As she's in the gondola trying to get it to start up again, she sees skiers going underneath the like underneath the gondolas. She's banging, but like no one's hearing her because they're actively in the motion of 
skiing and snowboarding there they can't hear her yeah and she's like high up there can she crack a window i don't i don't know the actual inner mechanics of it but there is a picture that we'll post on the instagram and on the youtube of what the gondola looked like oh my god it's like i'm thinking like the inside of like a ferris wheel and we're really just it's, locked in here it may have had like a padded like seat but it's not that different from like an enclosed ferris wheel it's actually a really great visual for the campers here yeah. you're so clever babe i try friday morning a call comes in to south lake tahoe fire department around 8 30 there was a woman at Heavenly Mountain Resort. So ironic that this is called Heavenly Mountain. With this, with, this is clearly Nightmare Mountain. Um, who was suffering from cold exposure, the caller said, according to Sally Ross, a spokesperson for the department. She had been found inside the gondola after workers started the lift up again for the day, sending her back down to the base of the mountain. A fire truck was dispatched, and minutes later, firefighters arrived at the resort. Lassa was treated at the scene and declined to be taken to the hospital. Oh. So she was, like, very chill. In the Zoom call that I saw in the interview. Very like, I don't know. She wasn't like pissed. So you want to hear how she described this? She described in the interview um, that she felt very frustrated. Oh. Which is so funny because like you guys know me. Like frustrated in this situation couldn't be further from where I would be. I would be livid. I would be in full panic attack. I'd be like clawing my eyeballs out. I'd be screaming. I'd be crying. I'd be throwing up. Like she was just a little frustrated. And that's interesting because what I'm picturing is a rich woman who skis, you know, in her leisure time and who would be like really pissed and pressing charges or whatever. Well, I don't know if she was rich, but I, she was a Spang- she was Spanish language speaking woman as like her primary language of so the entire interview was like translated. So I don't know if it was like lost in translation, the passion of what she was feeling, but she mm. did decline medical attention. She said she was like cold, obviously, like very cold the whole night and just frustrated, which is like, girl, just say you're a trooper. Like just say that you are like can withstand anything lake tahoe just had recently that like crazy avalanche too so like just been like really chaotic in the tahoe area if we have any like tahoe campers like shout out to you like we're just checking in because we have been concerned because tahoe's under a lot right now i think they should install a little button like how they have on the taxi cabs that you know how the light says like not in service or like call 911 they should have those inside of these for these types of situations now i know they don't happen often but once is too often enough. It's so funny you say that because I saw this article initially on Reddit and there were so many comments, like a thousand comments on this post about people who have worked at like ski places. And someone said something so funny. They were like, you think the people operating the ski lifts would be have some sort of like brain capacity to like do the whole loop. And apparently it is procedure that the ski lift operators are supposed to do like one final loop and call because they're all like numbered. They like be like, okay, 15 is going around now. We're going to wait for an entire cycle for 15 to be clear. And then people on both ends are operating. But people that have worked at ski resorts and on Reddit were saying, you wouldn't believe how many people go onto ski lifts when people aren't looking or like they're like cleaning up something and they hop on a lift because it's like a constant movement of just like operating rotation or whatever. Yeah. So, and then they also said like, you you also think that these are the most intelligent people. I'm telling you how many burnouts are just like working these ski lift jobs mm. just so they can ride for free. Like it doesn't, you don't have to have a fucking master's degree to, to run these things. So in her case, she said that she didn't sneak on, that she was allowed on. So it, they're definitely at fault. Obviously, uh, what's the mountain called? Happy Happiness Mountain. Heavenly Mountain Resort has um, given the classic response, in quotes, investigating the situation with the utmost seriousness. Well, what, are you going to put your clown shoes on and start checking <laughs> it up? Like, no shit. Like, it's just so stupid. Um, I would, like, just die. I would probably die. Did they talk to the person who loaded them on? No, and I, th- he's probably fired, for sure. Yeah. Um, They have that movie. Oh my god, Below Zero or whatever it's called. Fro- yeah. No, it's literally called Frozen. In that movie, they're in an uncovered one, but it, there's a movie that came out, and it's essentially this entire plot line, but like they're um, in an, an, an open air one, like a classic yeah, one. Yeah, a classic ski lift. And of course, it's a long weekend, it's like that movie with the, the pool cover, and they're like, it's a holiday weekend, how are we going to get out of this, vibes? I have a hard question for you. Okay, do you ask? I'll call it a sandwich's choice. Okay. Um, You have to pick between two options. For 15 hours, would you rather be stuck in an elevator or on an enclosed ski lift? And the elevator, for context, is high up in the building. Oh, a ski lift. Me too, because at any point, the elevator could drop. Right. And also in a ski lift, there's a window. I can wave. I can try to break it. I can shake it to create a motion. You can see some sort of like either, even if it's night, you can see the progression of like what's happening. And I would have a phone, just saying. Yeah. And sometimes when you're in an elevator... 
There's you don't no have reception. service. Yeah. yeah. And you press that crazy little button. I actually just came across that picture of if you if you're an avid listener, uh, you would remember whatever episode it was where we got stuck on an elevator and literally got a group photo of everybody who was trapped inside the elevator. Yeah. What else were we gonna do? And I group just photo. came across that photo today. I was like, I forgot about that. Yeah. So we've already been in that situation. So I think we can both agree I'd rather just be a little cold. Um, but you know what's crazy? This was at 458. So she missed dinner. You know? What if she didn't eat all day? Yeah. Then you gotta add the hunger on top of it. Maybe she had candies in her pocket. I don't know. I'm just, my heart's out. My heart's out for her. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike, where we bitch a little and tell something to take a hike. So what I'm telling to take a hike today is odd smells with no specific point of origin. I need context. So yesterday, I had a meeting that I was in, in person. So, you know, I was bopping around the city after I left. So I was like, you know what? I'm in Soho. You know, it's the concrete jungle. You're giving corporate girly. You're giving, just just say you're Samantha. Yeah, I'm skipping around the city with my little coffee in hand. I actually had a, a little spritzer. Were you wearing a business casual suit? No, I was wearing um, all black. Good. You mm-hmm. love to just kind of like, I don't know, dress as a roadie. Yeah. You, or like a, a stage hand, if you will. Yeah. You're like, pull the curtain. So, so anyway, I'm walking around the city and you know the city. It smells. New York City. It's got its sense. Oh, it's stinky. It's stinky. So I pop into Madewell and I'm like shopping around. I'm like, hey, the shit here, bitch, it's Madewell. And I got it. The, the connection was made. <laughs> And the store, like, so there was a smell. And I was like, what is that smell? In, in Madewell? Yeah. And I was like, it's, again, it's the city. It's whatever. So I hop out. I'm walking down the street. I say, you know what? Let me check out Urban Outfitters. Let me just see if they've got anything that I'm interested in. I understand. Turns out they didn't. But when I'm in there shopping around, I smell the smell again. Oh, my God. So it's following you. It's your upper lip, babe. Just say it's you. So then I'm like, well, shit, where is it coming from? I thought it was the city. I thought it was Madewell. And now it... Is this the trifecta? Could it possibly be Urban Outfitters too? Or am I a stinky bitch? Oh my God. You were wearing those weird tweed underwear. (laughs) Not the tweed. And that's the thing. Like we're baking bread down there. I did. You know, I'm yeasty. It's a sensitive subject. I did a body check. I smelled like under my shirt, nothing but YSL Eau de Parfum. I smell my (laughs) armpits. Doesn't smell like anything. I'm literally smelling my clothes. I'm smelling like my, I took the subway. I was like, did I sit on something on the subway? Also, I'm now having the lingering anxiety of, I just worked out, I just walked out of a meeting, like kind of a big deal meeting with like big deal people. And I'm not saying that to say that. I'm saying that because I was then like, shit, did like I do I fucking smell? Am I the stink? You left and all those corporate people, big wigs, were like, that guy was a stinker. He was stinking up the whole stinking room. And that was a thought I had. I was like, did they look at each other when I left? Because I thought they looked at each other when I left. Were they normally talking like they would have? I don't know. But then I got home and the smell was gone. And I couldn't figure out what it was. Can you describe the smell for the campers here? Because we don't have the scratch and sniff um, 3D Zoom feature that they did in Spy Kids when it was released in theaters. So like we have to like really just play to their senses. This is an audio only experience, sometimes video for our YouTube listeners. So you really need to go above and beyond right now and describe what you were smelling. It smelled a little like sweet trash. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, um, trash at the sugar factory. <laughs> exactly. Well, yes, exactly. Or perhaps what a, the at, fuck's up with the sugar factory? I'm going to talk about that in another show because I have a lot of thoughts on the them. casino. No, they're they're all they're always at casinos. Oh wait, but it's no, it's Sugar House Casino. Never mind. I'm an sugar idiot. factory is that place that people come and they're like, look at this eighty dollar smoking drink I have that has blue carousel. Oh in it. yeah, and they put like the rubber ducks in a blue drink. And I'm Kylie like, Jenner was all on? about it in 2014. Oh. I recall. Um, yeah, but I, I just, I don't know. I still don't know to this very day, but it bothered me so much that I don't know where the odor came from. I said, is it the concrete jungle or is it something fungal? It was sugar factory dumpster fungal. I, and I, I just, I will never know. Okay. So how do you think you can proceed moving forward to make sure that you're not this little stinker in the room? And I don't think that I was. Let's make that clear. Well, the jury's still out. No, I think the jury's back in. And I don't think I was the stinker. Sorry, this is not a yes and situation. I'm going to no and that. <laughs> I don't smell, okay? It was the city. No, you don't. You, hey, you're not a smelly boy. And you're always smelling yourself to check yourself. Like, you're constantly giving yourself a little whiff. Yeah, and it didn't smell like B.O. It smelled like weird hot trash. Maybe, maybe there was a leak. stepped in something. Oh, my God. I didn't even think that maybe I fucking stepped in something. I yeah. didn't. Hey, I didn't think of 
I didn't think about that. So what are you telling to take a hike? Um, this is because I saw this crazy TikTok. Um, I'm sure some of you have already seen it. It's the shoeless movement and specifically people who are doing it in a fake way. I learned a lot about the shoeless movement through a Vice article that I thought was really incredible. Um, but essentially the video that I'm referring to as my take a hike was it was sent these two, this couple, right? And they were talking about their aspirations to be shoeless. And I've and I've heard about these kind of people who just like walk their entire lives not wearing shoes. And this couple was, it felt like they were doing it for clout because they were taking like hundred dollar pairs of Jordans and cutting out the soles of them and then putting them, putting the shoe on to make it look like they were wearing shoes. But then if they like put their foot up, it would say that they were barefoot. But like physically the shoes weren't made correctly. So they were kind of just like flopping up and down and like you could just see their toe exposed. So like it just, it felt so performative and fake. And the video was up for 10 hours and it had 22 million views. So like, they did what they wanted to do. Yeah. They got their moment, but at what cost? Like, so like you're you're being performative. I don't think you're being truthful. And I'll tell you why I'm gonna call their b- bullshit out on this is because after she said it, she goes, Oh, we're going to our fir- our favorite place um first to Sephora. So it's like <laughs> not Sephora. Not that you can't be like a shoeless movement girly and then love Sephora. Like they're not like against each other, but it just seems like the people who are typically a part of the shoeless movement aren't just like going to like commercial cement based things. They don't even like to like really walk on cement. The whole basis of shoeless movement is to try to walk as much as possible on like grounded real earth, not yeah. on like a shopping complex. Yeah, not fucking linoleum trying to buy a mascara. This couple, I shit you not, they took probably like at least 20 pairs of shoes with like some sort of like heat gun or like blade and cut out the bottom of all these really expensive pairs of shoes to make this video and i just i like hate this notion of like doing stunt stuff for content it kind of feels based on like you know people do like uh like prank videos it's like yeah what are we doing here like and i and we're all i will not we're all but some of us are guilty doing it like i've made stunt food you know what i mean like what's that really contributing but like Right, but I, that's not a 15 minutes. This is like 15 minutes spent and you kind of look stupid. You've wasted all that. Yeah, but also it's shoes. like I'm going in very front facing being like, oh, I'm going to try to make this and it may be stupid, but like that's the goal of this video. But like they were soaking it in the idea of like truly being a part of the shoeless movement. And like if you are okay, but it just to me came across really fake and I'm not even going to be nice about it because I just I thought it was a desperate attempt at content how old do they look do we they were like in their 20s and they were full like glam and like and like it, that once again that doesn't mean you can't be a part of the shoeless movement but like i then read an entire article about the shoe like the shoeless movement and now i understand more about why people even do it in the first place and the reasons and i kind of understand it a little bit more do you want to hear about it yeah please so it's the shoeless movement is a desire to reconnect with nature and seek spiritual spiritual connection to um, needing easing physical pain. So one aspect of the barefoot movement is called grounding, which I've heard about this. It's touching the earth with bare skin, billed as a radical healthcare breakthrough to ease pain. Grounding can mean activities like walking barefoot on grass. The idea that being on the earth's surface contains free electrons that can be transferred to the human body via direct contact. A study published in the National Library of Medicine found that earthing helped in better sleep and reducing pain due to the transfer of electrons from the earth to the human body. So a lot of people have started like doing this as a way to like heal back pain and have found like really great results in it which i think is really cool yeah and it, it like sounds woo woo but if you really think about it it kind of makes sense no it, d- it definitely does and also like i saw this really interesting uh, like diagram of a foot and how like the human foot naturally like for millions of years was like been without shoes and then just recently have we just started as a society wearing shoes but like you know how like your big toe is kind of like forward and then the rest of your toes like kind of fan out to the left or the right depending on your foot but when you like line up the bone of your of like your shin and it goes down, it almost like goes down and then fans out to one or the other. But when you don't wear shoes and someone who's like never worn shoes their entire life, and they've done studies on like countries that just don't wear shoes, their big toe will kind of fan out to make it a more even shape to get more balance on the earth. Oh. So people who do the shoeless movement have a belief that <clears throat> the creation of shoes has made our feet mold into a uh unnatural way that our body doesn't like which can then trigger pain responses into our back and our oh, legs how interesting so i can i can see that and they do have these really interesting thing called barefoot shoes oh pff, i used one of those as a uh, take a hike remember the, the toe shoes oh yeah but the, it's a little different 
than okay. a barefoot shoe. What is it? Because a, a, a toe shoe for the most part does have the rubber bottom. Yeah. So barefoot shoes, um, they're not just like thin soled shoes. That's like a, a major like debunking things. Like in other words, the goal isn't to minimize the thickness of the sole, but to allow the foot to work in the same way it would it, it would if you were barefoot. So maybe it is kind of similar to like a toe shoe. Okay. But um, you can you can like recognize. Oh, so this is interesting. This you can recognize proper barefoot shoes based on several characteristics. So this is how you know if you have a good barefoot shoe. Space. They have plenty of room for your toes flexibility and adaptability barefoot um barefoot shoes follow the natural flow um, flow movement of your feet they're super lightweight that uh, have a zero heel drop barefoot shoes don't tilt your feet or change your body alignment like my hogas <clears throat> those can be furthest from the truth those can <laughs> rock me back and forth but i love that and then thin soles like the sole itself isn't meaningless if the shoe doesn't match any of the previous points so like it does have to have a thin sole but like not the only factor of it it's so funny though on the website they're doing like these frequently asked questions about barefoot shoes and like they're definitely getting a little crazy because at one point one of the questions is is um are there barefoot high heels and they're like no there is no such thing it's like no shit that's not a thing but like you don't have to add that in there but like they did some of us feeling silly because hey if i worked on the back end i'd be like this is a frequently asked question yeah exactly so like i made it seem like it was about barefoot movement it's really not i do believe that that could be super beneficial if you're into that kind of stuff like i'm not gonna yuck your yum i am gonna yuck the content creator who destroyed ten thousand dollars worth of nikes to make this bit that wasn't even a real lifestyle choice. And if it was, I didn't do my research, but like at the end of the day, why would you ruin $10,000 worth of great shoes instead of just buying a barefoot shoe that are clearly available to the market? You looked dumb, you did it for views, and you actually were successful. Like 22 million views on TikTok in 10 hours from a content creator is actually unheard of. And I'm pretty sure it was over a minute. So they monetized the fuck out of that. They got what they wanted. It's soulless. But you should have seen them walking around. Their toes were like flicking out and like they were not even made correctly. Mm. It was ridiculous. Well. Um, yeah. So people like that, take a hike. But which one do you think is worse? Fake content creators or mysterious odors of an unidentified origin? Now, can you imagine if I actually stepped in something, but I was wearing <laughs> a, a bottomless, I was, but, a, but I was bottomless I know, or shoeless, whatever. Well, one of the things that was interesting to go back to really quickly was that like people who there that was my thing i'm like what if you see glass but these people are primarily trying to walk in areas that are earth-based or like dirt or whatever and that they're very aware and that when you become a walker like that you're constantly like subconsciously like checking for things to avoid stepping in grossness or glass but it still seems a little unsafe to me if i'm gonna be honest yeah my friend nelson and he's a no shoe guy and we were working on a small budget production and he had the camera on train tracks and he was literally like running on the gravel and the the track. Yeah. In his bare feet. I was like, why are you doing that? First off, second off, like you can't be doing that when we're on like a set. Like you really can't be doing that. But yeah. OSHA comes over there like, hey, I don't care about your beliefs. Oh, it was very independent. So there was no OSHA in sight. But yeah, he just, he never wore shoes. Like ever. Unless he really had to like in a restaurant, but he just wouldn't wear shoes. One girl was like, don't worry about me though. She's like, I'm soaking my feet. I'm pumicing my feet. I'm doing this for my back health. And she really healed her all of her chronic back pain through it. Maybe I could do that. Yeah, but we're, we we live in Brooklyn. Maybe I'll do that at volleyball. At my game tonight, I'll just I'll be like, sorry guys, and the dogs are barking. Yeah, your feet are just like tapping against the, the plastic or like whatever, the wood. <laughs> So tacky. Yeah, why is it so tacky? Which one do you want to think is? Oh, worse? sorry, that, that sorry. was the original question. Um, I'm gonna say yours. The, uh, it's so obnoxious. Yeah, I'm gonna say mine too. Do you think the new counter likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boom toggle okay, turn. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week, campers. Who is getting that milk batch we talked about at the beginning of this episode? That's my Camper Crush of the Week. I'm just joking. This is the part of the show where we share who is succeeding in media, film, print, internet, life. It could be anything. Who's just really doing the damn thing? Jonathan, who are you giving your Crush of the Week approval? Well, it's not a who as most of mine are it's a what it was a phenomenon that happened to me not that long ago my crush of the week is deja vu come through beyonce <laughs> i was gonna say olivia rodrigo but you're so right they both I are good songs absolutely awful about thinking about olivia rodrigo you're so right you're a gen z i don't see any wrinkles on my face <laughs> wrinkle jack so i actually enjoy getting deja vu it makes me feel like a little esoteric 
a little like I can see it with my mind's eye. Like, yeah, it is giving esoteric oddity. I feel it is making me feel superior to my peers in the room. I also don't mind it to be honest. Some people like get triggered by it, but I'm like, oh my god, that was silly. Hey, I did some research. What is it specifically? Do you have a Do you have a definition for us? I do. Not as being like super research. We are so educational right now. We've been th- this episode was researched. Yes, it was. Okay, so déjà vu translates in French to already seen. Oh, it is French, duh. Yeah. Déjà vu. Um, and it's a trans, they call it a transit, transitory sensation. Transit, that really wasn't a hard word. It's just a word I haven't used often. <laughs> My God, hey, I'm having déjà vu. Uh, so it's a transitory sensation of having already lived a total a totally identical situation at some point in the past. It happened to me. You were talking to me the other day and I get hit with like these crazy emotions. I'm like, we've already had this conversation. I know exactly what you're going to say, but I can't put my finger on it. And then you say something. And then I'm like, yeah, I knew you were going to say that. And I'm like, I know something else. Like I've, I've been in this space. I've been looking inside the refrigerator while you're talking about X, Y, and Z. And it's just like, it's not something that we do usually. I don't know how to explain it. How do you explain deja vu to somebody who's never had it? It just feels like something that's happening in the present is a memory, but it's supposedly happening right now. So you feel like you've already lived it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I remember hearing, because I was always curious. I'm like, what is it? Like, is it, am I psychic? Am I a medium? Am I Teresa Caputo? Is it related to a mirage? So I heard the rumor that it's when like light enters one eye faster than the other. Have you heard of that? No, I'm, that's so funny. I've never heard. I never thought twice about what it actually is. That doesn't seem right. As a non-qualified MD list camp counselor, that rhetoric seems preposterous to me. If I go outside and put my hand over one of my eyes, I'm going to have deja vu. Yeah, right? That's what I'm like. You're Grow dumb. up, scientists. So uh, I did look up what it was, and I'm going to keep this short. I'm going to keep it brief, like my boxers. Deja vu is caused by a dysfunctional connection between the parts of our brain that play a role in memory, recollection, and familiarity, says neurologist Dr. Jean Coroy, um, who was explaining this in an article I was reading. So we have two temporal lobes, two shrimp temporal lobes. and Which one's your favorite? My left. That's funny because mine also is my left. Because you're left-handed. Yeah, so I, I just like love left always, left for life. <laughs> left for life, left for dead. Um, so <laughs> it's surrounded by this brain tissue that can be activated. And when you have deja vu, it's not, let me just clarify, it is not a seizure. But the <laughs> tissue gets, because I was- any, Was anyone confused thinking it was a seizure? Bitch, I was, because what I'm going to say next <laughs> freaks me out a little bit. Because I enjoy having deja vu. And then I was like, wait, should, I'm going to change my mind about this. I Let enjoy me having seizures. <laughs> it's a similar synapsis. Okay. Oh I'm my God. Not, I'm sorry. I'm listen, to, listen to me. A similar synapsis as when you have a seizure is what happens with your, with your <laughs> shrimp temporal lobes, which causes- um, you to to confuse familiarity with with things that have happened before, you know. So it's really just like a brain synapsis. It's like your brain's burping or like farting. I was just gonna say like a brain burp. Yeah. Oh my god, a brain burp. So let's stop. Let's stop giving the French all the 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 credit here. Let's in America. Let's change something else for ourselves. Deja vu is being rebranded to brain burp, and I love that for our journey. The deja vu rebrand. <laughs> Okay, so then I'm curious. I'm like, okay, what? Ha- who's this happening to? Everyone. Well, no, it doesn't happen to everybody. Isn't that crazy? So it's most likely to happen to people who are between the ages of 15 to 25 years old. Gay. Look at us. And your likelihood of experiencing it decreases progressively as you age. So it's not impossible. Like an old person can have deja vu, but it will happen like less frequently. Well, that's just Alzheimer's. Well, it could be. And it also happens more frequently during evenings on weekends versus Wait, weekdays. Uh, this is not real. First of all, I believe we're both older than 25 and we're still getting deja vu actively. Well, I think maybe during these tests, if your brain is focusing on something like work and then after work decompressing or like school during a weekday and then after school decompressing or doing something leisurely, maybe like, I don't know, the weekend when you kind of have downtime to relax is when your brain can have like a little burp. It just lets it out. Oh, yeah. Like has a minute. And maybe since like we don't have a normal work schedule. Our lives might seem more relaxed to our brains, and it's like, yeah, it just burping all day long, burp, burp, burp. I'm like, am I psychic? And I'm like, no, I'm just gassy in my brain. Well, ask Teresa Caputo about it. I like, should. Girl, I sh- what's your opinion on deja vu? She's like, girl, I'm doing it right now. Side note, we did text on um, Messenger. We told her we're interviewing her. She's so excited. 
Sorry. I'll tell you guys that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask her if she's had deja vu. Um, okay, so really quick. Again, researchers say you are more susceptible to deja vu, aka brain burping, if you, one, have a high level of education, two, travel a lot, three, remember your dreams, or four, hold liberal beliefs, which I think is interesting and cunning. I just wanted to use that word. I don't think it's cunning. I don't I don't even know if I know what cunning means. I don't think you use that correctly. And also, like, the more you read from this article, the more the I, least, the least yeah. I believe it. What does have being liberal have to do with deja vu? I don't know. I think it's... Republicans maybe, don't have deja vu. Maybe, maybe more um, conservative people didn't want to take, didn't want to participate in this It cast. feels like you're drinking the juice. And you know what? Give me a fucking paper straw. Because I'm drinking the juice. Do you want a camp sippy cup? Yes, please. I love that. The ones that like won't spill. Mm. Not the Stanleys. We can't talk about that legally. Have you heard about that? No. Oh, I'm not. There's traces of things. That oh, lead. It's not looking good. I don't, allegedly. Allegedly. Listen, I just hit my vape before this segment. I think I'm okay. Someone's going to kill me faster. Listen, we just got signed to a parent company. Let's not put news out there. That's not out there. Anyway, what are you crushing on? The traffic chip. Okay. The traffic chip. <laughs> Stop. It sounds like you just turned on a projector. I've been waiting my turn patiently. Yes, you have. Yes, and a traffic chip. Kira, you know I'm recording. A traffic chip <laughs> is a large bag of chips that is only eaten on car rides over 90 minutes, preferably family size. I wrote that myself. Wow. Doesn't that seem like it would be on like a Google thing for like what a traffic chip is? I was going to ask what neuro neurologist was quoting that. So you know when you're on a road trip and you buy a bag of chips, that's a traffic chip. But you can only have a traffic chip on a road trip over 90 minutes. Okay. Because then otherwise it's just a snack on the yeah, road. Then it, otherwise it's a, ro a roadie. Yeah. A traffic chip is ro it's, it's a road trip chip. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I bring this up because we went this past weekend to New Hampshire. We went to Wentworth, New Hampshire because, um, Kira, who just called me, her husband's birthday was Saturday. So they went snowboarding and skiing on Loon Mountain. So we went to this beautiful cabin in Wentworth, New Hampshire. If you're looking for a great cabin, check it out. I linked it on my, um, post. We went and it was worth it. It was. And like th they, they were going to go on a couple's birthday trip. I started crying on the FaceTime call, begged if I could come. They felt bad because there was an extra bed. Jonathan and I got to crash. So when they went skiing, we kind of just like hung out and like did our own thing. We made great videos, watched them on our Instagrams and TikToks, whatever. But it was a five-hour drive. So on while we were up there, we were stopped at a Walmart. I got Ruffles. What kind of Ruffles did I get? You got Buffy's favorite Ruffles. They're the cheddar sour cream. There has never been a better chip than a ruffle sour cream and cheddar chip. That is the perfect, that is the perfect traffic <laughs> chip. chip. It really is. It is. And the, you know what? You know you're having a good time when your your lap is covered in crumbs and some fingerprints, some Cheetle, if you will. You remember Cheetle? That's a callback. And the, the steering wheel is a little, it's a little crummy that's when you know you're having a good traffic chip a traffic chip is a chip you only have on a road trip so you don't just pull that out right when you pull out of the driveway this is something when you're off your first podcast maybe you're into your like music cycle at this point and you go hey can you reach back there and grab that bag of chips and then you start munching going to town because yeah. you're not going to stop for food yet but i'm getting a little hungry mm -hmm. and i think another um great traffic chip idea would be a cape cod Classic. Classic. The kettle cooked. If you buy the reduced fat, I will be able to tell and I will not forgive you. Don't ever buy that in my presence. What do you think is a good traffic chip? I had Doritos. I love Doritos. I'm not a Dorito head. I never have been. I will occasionally indulge on the purple back sweet chili. Maybe a Cool Ranch, never a nacho. But when I'm forced against my will to have it, I always enjoy it. Mm. But like, I can never get over that mental halt, like hump unless I'm like. It's interesting because Doritos are the only chip that I can put away. Not, not, I'm not put away as in like stuff my no, face I with it. You. I mean, like, I can have a couple and then I'm like, I'm still hungry, but I'm all set with what's going on here. If you put a Cool Ranch Dorito under a microscope, as one does, there is red and green flecks like Christmas. What is that? A, it's, a question for the ages. It's almost like little microchips of flavor. Microchips. <gasps> wow. Patent that. 
yeah, that's a digital chip that you can only eat online. <laughs> We're working on businesses. We're like so business orientated. Um, no. Can, hey, take a gigabyte out of that. Oh my God. Oh, we can do this forever. We can't stop ourselves, can we? We should get into business, but find multiple suppliers because uh, we can't do... I know a guy looking to work with us. His name is David Tran. He's been hitting me up nonstop about this chili company. Let's get that sriracha chip. I love traffic chips. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. You know the deal. These are songs that have been stuck in our head all week. Playlist is linked below. Jonathan, what song's been stuck in your head all week, darling? Song that's been stuck in my head all week. I actually heard in the store the other day. Was it in Madewell while you were stinking up the place? Uh, maybe <laughs> it was either Madewell or Urban. They were like, "Get out!" But also Shazam this before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't have to Shazam it because it's a song that I know and I love, and I know you know and love because we've bopped to it together. And the song is "Sugar Sugar." Oh, I love you. Got me lifted, gifted, feeling the gifted sugar. How you? But that was wrong. That was no, wrong. that that was essentially right. It's by Baby Bash. Baby Bash. What year was that? Two thousand one. <sighs> 2003 i don't know i didn't really do my research on this i i was doing too much research on everything else so then it came down to it you and were. i knew i knew i wanted to do this song so i said there's got to be a fun fact about baby bash or this song turns out there's not you know what though a song that's such a smash hit doesn't need to rely on a fun little fact mm -hmm. they they relied on their intentions and their morals and how great that song is everybody exactly. knows it absolutely right and i was going to supplement it for something else and i said no you know what I want to listen to the song and I want the campers to hear the song and I want it to be on the playlist. I would rather the campers have a great song on the playlist with not a lot of storytelling around it and then have a good story and then a so-so song. Yeah. It's good enough for the campers just to just bang out to it on the playlist. And we just spent about two minutes talking about how we don't need any context to it. So we took up the time there. Yeah. He sure. says something like, I got some hot on my honey bun. Mama. With your sweet honey buns. <laughs> <laughs> with your sweet honey Did you bun. see the music video? Is it multiple men? They yeah, it's be. oh my god! Wait, it's Fra Frankie J. It's I don't have anything written down. I don't know. I could be saying it wrong, but they're like driving around the city, and he has like those piercing eyes. He's kind of a babe, but they're like looking out, and all the girls like there's an ice cream like an ice cream truck girl and like a crossing guard girl, and they're just like hot girls all over town, and they're just like sugar, sugar, how you guys so high? Yeah, sugar, sugar. I love that song. It's a great song. So anyway, that's my camp song. Great. My camp song this week is Burning Down the House, the Paramore cover. Mm. I opened up my Spotify this week and I saw that Paramore did a cover of Burning Down the House by the Talking Heads, one of their classic New Age rock songs. Ta Talking Heads has such an eclectic sound. And uh, it's an like eclectic look. It's New Age rock. It's experimental. It was something that no one else was really doing at the time. And I was confused. And I thought initially by like, it was just like a single, like an, like a single release by Paramore. And I was like, oh, okay. Like it's going to be um, like a, a cover album that Paramore is doing because it was titled Everyone's Getting Involved. But then I did some research and apparently A24 has officially announced its cover compilation called Everyone's Getting Involved, a tribute to the Talking Heads, Stop Making Sense. Everyone's Getting Involved celebrates A24's recent re-release of Stop Making Sense, Jonathan Demme's groundbreaking concert film that was shot over three nights at the Hollywood Pantage Theater in December 1983. The independent film company recently kicked off a new slate of theatrical screenings that will play in cities such as Chicago, London, Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco. I've actually Whatever. seen that. So it was like an iconic concert film of its time, recorded over three nights, kind of spliced together, set a standard for how we now have concert films. It was a like really groundbreaking at the time. Yeah. So A24 got the rights to it and is now distributing it. But to promote this like selected screenings in selected cities, they've contracted a bunch of artists to cover the entire set list from the movie. Like, Oh, very cool. Yeah, so the leading single is Burning Down the House by Paramore. We don't know who's singing what other songs, but we do know who is on the album. Can I, say, can I make an educated guess? Yes. Uh, on my hypothesis is that Miley's on it. Miley is on I it. I knew it because she had David Byrne on when she did New yes. Year's two years ago. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, the other big, big heavy hitter is your um, song of the week last week. What? Lord. 
Oh, come on, Laura. Yeah, that makes sense. And then a lot of people I don't know, but I am going to read because I feel like if you do know, you'd want me to read it. So I know The National, obviously. And I know um, Kevin Abstract, but Girl in Red, Tizo Touchdown, Chicano Batman, The Linda Lindas, El Mato, The Caveman, Blood Shell, like Blonde Shell, I'm sorry. These people are probably like super relevant. I just, I'm not hip to them, but like they're all going to be a part of it. They're all doing different songs. I don't know what song everyone's going to do. Interesting. When is it coming out? Um, well, Do the we... movie's coming out pretty soon. I'm sure the album's coming out. Oh, I wonder sooner. if it'll come out. I wonder if it's out by the time this is out. I don't know. Because it, it might be new, new Music Friday. Who knows? Well, yeah, Paramore just came out this week, so I'm not really sure. Um, this song, you know how it goes? Watch out. You might get what you're after. Cool, babies. Strange, but not no stranger. You know, that, that kind of flow. You know what song I love by them that I didn't realize was The Talking Heads? Psycho Killer? Once in a Lifetime. Oh, it's like letting the days go by, let the water hold me now. Letting the days go by, water flowing under. Yeah, I like that. Song. Like, and you might ask yourself, same as it ever was. Yes. Yeah. And David Burns wears like those like really crazy suits, and Paramore and like the the little video oh, they wore, promo. Yeah. She's wearing like the really crazy boxy like yeah corporate the, suit. It's kind of like what you wore to your meeting when you were stinking up Madewell. Oh yeah, well, it looks like you're like smuggling out a flat screen under your jacket. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I'm excited to see Miley and Lord, and I, I love Kevin Abstract too. The National as well. The rest of them I will learn to love because I think this is a fun collaboration and a great way to promote. Um, the re-release of a movie and have people be a part of a fun project. So, um, but the burning down the house by Paramore, I'm a Paramore head. There's parrot heads for Jimmy Buffett. There's Paramore heads for me. I just really love her so much. I love the entire band and it was, it's so fun. I can't stop listening to it. And it, Hey, it was a good cover. I did hear it today when you were mm -hmm. listening to it. I should have assumed that's what you were going to do. Yeah. So that's all we have this week. Um, if you haven't yet, we have the Patreon available. We have so much going on in February that are going to be vlog based. We're going on a cruise. Okay. We haven't okay, talked we about, talk about that in three weeks. So there's going to be another debauchery based cruise like last year. If you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to the cruise episode because it's one of our most iconic pieces. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you have time, please rate us five stars. Give us a little review if you have not. Uh, parent companies, all eyes on us as they should be, but we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for listening. Yeah. And thank you for being a part of like this show. Seriously. Like it's a really big milestone professionally for you and I, and as much as the show is going to maintain its integrity and the fun that we've done here, it's really great to be validated and to be a part of a network. So it's just, it's a really iconic, exciting moment for us and for everyone who's been here from either today or every episode before you will always be really special to us because you were here grassroots and believed in the show and you genuinely got us to the point of being signed so like from our deepest hearts seriously thank you so much for believing in this fictional super camp we'll see you guys at the galentine's day gala and with that being said lights, lights out, out campers, campers.